afternoon. Thanks for coming. Um, obviously looking forward to uh, getting this season kicked off. Uh, guys are coming off what I think was a very productive fall football camp. Um, that was led into that with a great summer. So I think our team is excited to get ready to get back on the field. Looking forward to playing a really good Illinois team, a team that I think is really well coached and um, got a ton of respect for the, the culture that Coach Bielema has been able to create there. That's a brand of football. The guys look like they play really, really hard in all three phases and a very talented team. So um, a group that we're going to have to be at our best to, to compete with this weekend. And uh, certainly looking forward to the challenge. You mentioned fall camp. Uh, gave a little assessment there. How 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 ready is this team? How uh, much do you yeah. think you built in the spring and summer on what you? Well, I mean, I, you're never ready until you play somebody else. I mean, I think that's a that's one thing's for sure. But uh, I I think we have a very veteran group of guys that understand what good practice looks like. You know, whether that be winter workouts and you know through February, whether that's spring ball through you know March and April, or if that's you know, out here at the strength coach in the summer and then leading into what I said was a, like, said, a pretty productive fall camp. So um, I think they know how it's supposed to look. I think they feel anxiety when it doesn't look the way it's supposed to look. Um, and they feel good when it looks the way it's supposed to look. So a uh, very mature group, a group that can, can hold their own and can do their own thing and, and really hold each other accountable to the work necessary to be a good football team, I think. Do you think your too deep is like a set thing or are there still spots where like no i i you know i mentioned this to our coaches yesterday in our meeting and i've said this in front of the team i think that you know uh, you know player number 28 to 30 to 45 i mean that is we're only going to be as good this year as that group of guys can be and uh whether that's you know game reps or the continuation of their development through these first four or five games of the season um Injuries always play a factor in college football, as you guys know. We've, we've been as victimized as anybody has come to that over the past couple of years. So it's uh, bound to happen. You lose somebody that you don't want to lose at some point in time, and you got to continue to develop guys and, and pour into their development. And we can't, as a program, we can't just turn the page and say, hey, uh, these are the 22 starters, and this is who's going to practice and, and get ready to play the game. we got to continue to pour into those guys that are in the second group and some of the guys that are in the third group because there's some really talented freshmen here too. When you guys are playing the Notre Dame or Illinois in the opener, can you sense a slightly sharper camp just with the test that's right off the bat? Well, I, I think the biggest challenge of any any football team is the, the the maintain to be able to maintain the emotion that comes with the start of preseason, right? You know, the, the day one of preseason camp, the huddles are a little tighter, you know, and they're running 110s and 53s and sprints all summer and ready to practice. So, um, I think that as a part of it, is it, is it a factor? I don't, I don't know, uh, maybe, but I think that, you know, just the, the you know, this, this team really likes to be around each other, loves to practice, and for them guys to be back and be able to do what they love to do. Uh, and this is just a, this is just another chance to have a little carrot on top of the end and play a really good team this weekend. And an opener like this with a veteran team, do you guys talk openly about what a special opportunity this is? I guess, what, what is the opportunity for you guys? Well, well, I mean, I think the opportunity is obviously you get to find out where you're at, you know? Um, you know, we, we had two really good games last year to finish the season. We braided some balls around our program in the offseason, but, you know, yesterday's home run is going to win today's games. I mean, you got to go play and you got to go uh, perform now. You know, we, we can learn our lessons from the past and we can look forward to the future, but this is about producing in the present. So, a stiff test for us. Very good team on defense. A uh, team that's, I think, really starting to figure out program wise who they are and uh, feeding into that, you know, that identity. So, we're, we got our hands full Saturday night. We got to play, play our best. Where, where are you guys from a health standpoint? I think we're in a good spot. I mean, I feel much better right now than we were at this time last year. Um, you know, the guys are, it's, it's football. I mean, we competitive camp and, you know, we're dealing with some guys that are, you know, to be determined. You know, we're not going to have Lenny Cool this year. I mean, he's going to be out for the season, had surgery on his knee. So he'll be one that'll be done for the year and, and out. Um, but other than that, I think we're pretty, we're pretty solid. We're in a good spot and we're, we're trending you know, back of, off of bumps and bruises and things that, you know, happened early in preseason camp or lingering stuff in spring practice. So I feel good where we're at. For a guy like Jawan, how neat is it and unique that he gets to play his brother in the season opener? Man, I, special deal right there. Now, I, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could do that. You know what I mean? Uh, I'd, I'd want to do it and we are really competitive and obviously looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a special day for him, a special day for Johnny and it'll be a special day for that family. Um, you know, obviously a, a family that has put a, a lot of time and energy into football, um, you know, and then 
and all their all their children and um, a, a group of parents that really try to make it work and be at everything. So probably a really cool moment for them to be in one place and not have to be torn between whose game they have to go see this weekend. So looking forward to that. As you kind of get folks back from injury and stuff, just can you talk a little bit about the grit that Dan has when it comes to, I mean, his ability to bounce back and kind of battle through injury these last couple of seasons? Yeah, I mean, I think a clear example of what perseverance looks like, um, you know, understanding that it's not the, sometimes you're going to get dealt a bad hand in life and you got to you got to respond to it. And he's handled that, you know, in a first class manner. Another, you know, the other dad's a football coach, uncle's a football coach, football family, brother played division one football. You know, this is a football family that this is really important to them. And uh, it's one thing to have something taken away from you that you did something to make it to make it happen. But when you have no responsibility in the, in the situation and it's just an unfortunate circumstance, man, it's tough to deal with. So I know he really relied on his family members and the people around him. And um, he's got a lot of people in this room that have a ton of respect for him. And um, just this process to continue to come back and to fight back. It, uh, it's, it should be, it's a, it's a story that needs to be told. And it's certainly one for a young player if it's dealing with the same thing that they can look at and say, hey, this is what the success looks like on the back end of it. And we're looking forward to him having a great year. And he's been quite an ambassador off the field for Toledo football as well, just with the work he's done in the community. Mm -hmm. What does that say about him as a person and just the type of guys you recruit? Well, I mean, how do you make an impact? And when, you know, like these guys all come to, come to school here wanting to play football, doing what they love to do. And when that's taken from you, how do you how do you continue to make an impact? And how do you continue to, you know, I think probably more, he, he's out here helping people in the community, but it's probably, if you ask him, he probably tell you it helps him more than, than anything, you know, going through that moment, going through those, those situations that he's he's had to go through. Um, but yeah, a great ambassador for our program. And, and like I said, a clear picture of what it should look like off the field as well. You've mentioned the competition that's been taking place throughout camp. Um, in one phase of the game, special teams, have you started to see some starters emerge, or could you be testing out different guys throughout the course of the Illinois game? Um, yeah, I mean, bringing Coach Weber in to kind of just make special teams his main focus and, you know, you know take that uh, portion of the game plan and give it to him and allow him to do it uh, has created a lot of uh, competition. Um, you know, we you know, you're probably specifically asking about kicker and punter and who the long snapper will be, but uh, you know those have those those positions have pretty much identified themselves, and uh, the competition throughout the whole thing, and all the units of all eleven guys, I think, has been really really good. You know, there's a competitive drill every every other every other day in practice where uh, some of those second team guys and some of those third team guys that Kyle was mentioned earlier have a chance to develop and have a way to be seen on tape and have a way to hopefully make an impact early on in the season in some of these games. So excited where we're at there and. and uh, you know, that's a major part of what has to be done here. I, mean, there's, I think there was 40 some football games over the last three years in our league that have been decided by six or less points. So, you know, the margin of error is very thin. Uh, to win all your games and to play in championship type games, you have to be really good in the kicking game. So, you know, we put all the energy in that in the offseason and hopefully it pays off here. Toledo well, hasn't taken down a power five since 2015. What are those little differences that can turn a game into a victory versus a defeat? Well, I mean, I think you obviously. You know, whether it's Toledo playing whoever or it's any game you would have had on Saturday on TV, um, more games are lost than they are won. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. I, you know, teams self-inflict, turn the ball over a lot, they have a ton of penalties, they make costly errors in tough moments and in, in, in tough spots. And um, yeah, we got to protect the ball. We got to make smart plays. We have to you know, communicate great on defense and not give up easy touchdowns. We have to make them earn whatever they get. Um, and then you know, obviously playing the number one defense in the country last year. So we're going to have to earn everything we get on offense. So, uh, you know, and then play sound in the kicking game. If you, you know, that game you're mentioning back in 15, that's Zach Quinn blocking a punt. That's uh, Dewan Rogers intercepting the ball on the six yard line. That's, you know, uh, Keyshawn Wiltz are having a great catch down to the two yard line on third and five on the first drive of the game. Like there's, there's a lot of those plays that show up that are guys rising to the occasion in a tough moment. That's going to be required, you know, it's required every game. But it's going to be required Saturday night. You were around for that 2015 game. Um, I don't know how much, like seeing that up close, does that give a team this like shot of confidence and kind of jumpstart a season? Obviously, yeah, you guys are like eight and zero. You're in the group of five conversation that year. Well, I mean, again, yesterday's home runs don't win today's game. So you know, learn from the past and you know, see what you can pull from that and see what applies. Uh, you know, 
same kind of culture of that team. You know, obviously, Coach Bielema coached that team. Uh, big physical squad there as well. And, team that made you earn everything that you got. You had to go beat them. They weren't going to give you anything. So, um, you know, a lot of our guys played in, in the Notre Dame game a couple years ago here. A lot of guys played in the Ohio State game last year. Two uh, games went way different different in, in, in each scenario. So, um, you got to go play really well. you got to play, you know, like I said, you got to play sound football and, and do what you got to do. And, you know, like I said, some of those other moments, I don't know, I don't know how much you can pull from that, how much you can, you can really put stock into. How you return your quarterback, he's going to be a three-year starter. Uh, like, essentially all your top skill guys are back. How comfortable, how good do you feel about this offense that are in the air? You know, same as I felt last year at this time when none of the skill guys were back. You know, we, this is this year's team. This is a team that's got to continue to identify itself on what we can do. Um, we've got to put a plan around those guys that allow the good playmakers to go make the plays that they can make. Um, you know, and from the quarterback's perspective, it all goes through him, you know, and that that pro that that part of it has got to be, uh, you know, it's got to re, it's got to identify itself on game day. It can't, you know, there's really good moments in practice. There's other ones that are not good in practice, and you're, you're trying to get that meal moved all the way to the, to the all good. Um, so we're gonna do a good job as a staff. Gonna have a great good practice. He's gonna do a great job investing in it. And I think that whole room, though, like him, Tucker, John Allen, you know, RJ, all those guys have done a good job through the preseason. Of Taking the fine details, and Coach Weiner's done a good job of putting them in situations where, uh, you know, they're subject to failing, and sometimes they do fail. And how can you learn from your failures and bounce back? Because I think ultimately the resiliency of, of that guy's at that position is ultimately going to be that's how it's going to be defined. If he can bounce back from tough moments, who, who will the captains be this year? Uh, we got three guys coming back that are captains. You know, obviously Zach Ford was the captain last year. Uh, Jerwin Newman was a captain last year. Quan Finn was a captain last year. And we've got a couple more guys that will add to that mix. We voted on them this past weekend. And, you know, I'll, I'll make that public once I tell the team who they are. One bigger picture question. Yesterday, the whole department went through a session on the dangers of sports gambling. I'm just kind of curious when you look at the things across the country, Iowa, Iowa State, and just sports betting legal in Ohio now. I guess how much is that emphasis with the team? I, as a coach and your staff, I mean, how much do you guys have to hammer that into them just to be smart? Just with all the craziness around them. Yeah, I mean, whether, I mean, what are the temptations? You know what I mean? And what are the, first of all, what are the things that are taking you away from being able to be the best football player you can be? Whether that's alcohol, whether that's drugs, whether that's gambling, whether it's video games, whether, whatever that is, like, if it's prohibiting your success on the field or in the classroom, like, it, it has to be, obviously, it has to be addressed. Uh, as far as the gambling piece of it specifically, like, obviously, it's illegal. Um, you know, that's, have to bring awareness and I think the difference between now and five or six years ago is everything at, at the touch of their fingertips on a phone and how this is all put in front of their face at all times you know, there's temptation all the time sign up for this and you get four hundred dollars of free money to do this and that kind of thing like these are college guys these are college students these are this goes on all over the dorms and all over campus and um, you know I, I obviously not trying to <laughs> I, I get it, I understand, but I think that we've created some of this momentum and this little surge of, like, you know, uh, hey, we got to bring this to stadiums, we got to bring this to different states, and then all of a sudden now it's like, man, well, what if this happens? We've we put this in front of these kids, we've created this problem, in my opinion, and, you know, but yes, the education piece of it is constantly talked about, it's constantly hammered on, and there's plenty of examples throughout college football, there's plenty of examples through the NFL of the do's and don'ts and the dangers of what you're doing by rolling the dice with your career over you know, a little bit of fun on the weekend. On, on that same note, I know you coaches are always paranoid, but last week the Big Ten said they're going to have league-wide status reports, kind of how the NFL does their injury reports. Like In this era of sports gambling, do you think like it should be like a nationwide college football thing? Or? Well, I think we're all for – I think we all would be in, in, in agreement that blanket system that would you know we got to do what everybody else does i mean there's what's there's not i think that's what everybody would be searching for so um yeah i'd be totally be glad you know how everybody in the country is hiding depth charts today because it's media day and not giving you release from your depth chart i can tell you who our two deep is i'll send you the playbook if you want to know if you can get the plays called in the 30 seconds and in between plays be my guest i mean this is this is just like i don't i don't know I guess I'm a little, I don't know, I guess I'm different, but the hiding of everything is whatever. 
How, back to the captains. Like, what, what do you think the role of the captain is on the team? The role of the captain to me would be a guy that's a clear picture of what it should look like each and every day. Um, he has the ability to, through action rather than words, carry the message and uh, carry the uh, mission of the football team and the coaches, uh, and really from the top down. He's got the ability to capture his teammates in the locker room through his work ethic and how he goes about his business. Um, and then from there, then after that is done and that is established, he probably has the right and earned the right to open his mouth and say stuff when things don't look the way they should. Um, I think more than ever today, it's away from the field more than anything, uh, making sure that you know uh, we make great decisions away from the football field and away from the building and the facility. I think that's a highlighted thing that's, you know, guys make mistakes all over college football. I'm not saying our guys don't make mistakes, but uh, you know, great leadership and, and, and being a captain, like. Uh, you're the guy that's in front of the. You're 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 the guy that's going to be looked at, whether you like it or not. You know, there's responsibilities that come along with that that you, the rest of the guys, don't have. There's responsibilities of being a starting quarterback or playing quarterback, for that matter, that the rest of the team does not have. So, um, but you chose it. You put yourself in this role, and uh, so I think our guys will definitely embrace that. I think that we have really good kids that are in that spot, and I think there's probably six or seven guys that won't be a captain this year that in other in years past that would be. Um, it's just the makeup of our team right now, and that's a good thing.